Hello and welcome to Floyd Models Kit View Time. Today we've got the Fly 172nd Bristol 170 Freighter Mark 21. And you might not have heard of it, and that's where Fly comes in. That's the great thing about this particular company. They tend to do subjects which aren't common, but are still actually very, very important, especially in aviation and things like that. So it's really nice to see when Fly come out with these kits of something just a little bit different. Now this particular kit is available in two forms. They do it in this one, and also they do another camo one. It's the same kit, just different deco options. They do it. Now you might have seen me work with Fly before. I've actually built their Wessex, which is a beautiful, beautiful helicopter. But just be remember, limited run company. So you might have a few little things like lacking locating pins and all the usual things with it, but it does make up with some great actual resin parts in there. So you've got a little bit down the aftermarket route as well. So it's actually something very, very special. So without further ado, so see, lovely little bit of box art. I went for this one instead of the camo one because I love these schemes, you know, that sort of golden age of aviation again, okay? So it is 70 second scale, but it's still gonna be quite a large lump. So if we have a run round on the box. This is the Australian and the uh, Pakistan uh, version of this particular kit, okay? So again, a little bit down about it down on there. You've got your kit number for this particular one, which is 72033, okay? And then down in here, we have got those two versions. So down in here, you've got the raw Australian Air Force one, and we've got the raw Pakistani Air Force, both 1950s sicker, okay? And a very nice decal sheet. Okay, so inside the box, we have bag, one bag with everything in. So we've got your clear parts, you've got your resin bits and all your bits and pieces, and you can imagine are just down in there like that. We've got the usual sort of pull-out book, just down in here, which looks like, just off the bat here, you can see they've done a reprint um, because the decals are obviously far too pale. So they've done those again, which is quite a nice touch with this one. So if we have a look-see in here to see what we've got. Okay. Get in. Okay, so. We don't stick the decals sheet to it, which is what I didn't want to do, but ended up doing anyway. So there we go, all the way. Okay, let's move that out of the way, because that's very sticky. So, as always, we'll start with the instructions. So you've got your actual sprue call-outs on this one. So technically we've got, well, one, two, three, four, five sprues, and that's it. And then obviously we've got a color sprue, sorry, a clear sprue to go with that as well, all right? So down in here, you've got your color call-outs again. You've got your humbrals, um, you've got AK real colors, and you've got your guns one. So you're pretty much covered with all your different ones down in there. Got a mask set with it as well. And this is obviously your resin parts, and we've got some paper parts as well. So you actually cut these out, if that makes Makes sense okay if you're actually your instrument panels and things like that all right but again some nice details down in there so working our way through on this one again uh, depending on which one so like we were saying, be careful, have a good look through these because obviously there's a camouflage version that is differences. They tend to use a common, uh, shall we say, uh, form for these. So the instructions will be the same for both kits. So it's saying down in here as well, uh, only uh, for the camouflage team about cutting out the front there, drilling holes and things like that, all right? The paper ones we spoke about, which are these ones just down in here, this is gonna make up your instrument panel. You've got your flight deck, center console, seats and that. But again, we're only 70 second scale. And to be honest, I don't think you're going to see much in here anyway, all right? But you get the general sort of gist for it down on there. Straight to step four is on about the actual prop and painting your prop and all the things that are going to go with it down in there. Then you're on to the other one. And personally, I wouldn't mess around with all these clear parts. I'd probably PVA glue them, but it does come with a mask set if you did want to do that. Flight deck colors being painted, uh, some little decals onto it as well. And then obviously the instrument panel being fitted, sandwiching it all down, but don't forget to put the, the lock really for the actual tail wheel as well to give it a little bit more strength. Popping down the clear parts, again, there is a mask set as well, so Matt will be happy. We've got some other parts down in here, some little uh, intakes, various coolers down in there, different nose being fitted down in there, again, for the camouflage one, depending which one you are doing, to so make sure you've got the right ones, lights, things like that going down in there as well. Wing sections, pretty straightforward. You've got, it looks like a little radiator being fitted down into these ones, and then various parts being fitted down and putting those in. Tail wheel goes in. We got some little pitot tubes down in here. Then we're into the actual engine nacelles the themselves. So we've got the engines being fitted and those ones putting down. And obviously these double up as well as the undercarriage, which isn't retractable. It's fixed undercarriage on this one. 
Okay, those being fitted down in there, the wheels obviously got a little bit of detail as well for the riggy bits around the actual gear. The brace coming across and in, cooler being fitted to the top of the engine onto the wing area, and then the prop being fitted on. We've got a couple of the antennas being fitted down in there as well, and that is it. So, again, this is a just like when we did tackled the Fly Wessex, it's very basic, but it makes a fantastic jump off point for actually doing everything else. Okay, so if you wanted to, you could have the front open, scratch build the interior. I scratch built the entire interior of mine as well. So we put all the ribbing into it and all the bits and pieces when we did the Wessex. Same type of thing with this one. So that's what's really nice about these kits. You can build them straight out of the back, you know, as it is, no problem. You have a beautiful looking model or you can really go to town with it as well. So the two options we've got down in here, again, because obviously it's got this cover on it, it's just showing them on there. So you've got that nice sort of orange, uh, or you can go with that really nice sort of silver finish with the actual gorgeous green of the uh, Pakistani markings on that one as well. Then you've got your common ones on the back here for actually all your decals uh, being pitted down in here for the actual, all your placards and various things, uh, stencil data, all right. Decals themselves, as we said, obviously they did pick it up and we'll give them that because this is way too faded. This is the wrong shade of blue. So what they've actually done is do a reprint of the correct colors. So in theory, you could go with a faded look. So if you're thinking of doing something a little bit old and worn, you could probably use that. If you want anything a little bit more nicer, you've got the correction set with it as well. So you can do it that way. Apart from that, the other ones down here for the stencil ones, and again, they usually are very, very nice looking across, minimal carrier film. They look good, solid, good colors on these and everything else. So really from that point of view, I think actually they're very, very nice indeed. You can catch it on the close up. You can see very nicely printed. No problem with those. Very nice. Okay, so if we just have a look here, we've got a die cut mask set. So Matt would be happy. Okay, so again, if you're worried about masking, you can just do it literally like that. So that's quite nice to get that in there as well. Okay, so into the bag. This is a really thick bag as well. Ah, get in. Not your normal crispy wrinkly bag. This is like industrial reusable one. Okay, so down in here, if we have a look at the smaller parts first. So this is your aftermarket -y type resin parts in here. I say aftermarket, not really, but you know what I mean. It's the detail part. So down in here, again, you have to be a little bit careful and it has happened here as well. You can see, I think this is one of the tail wheel braces and the parts. So they do tend to rattle around in here, but it gives you a good idea. So we have got molded in harnesses already into the seat. And as you can see, the seat isn't too bad at all. We've got some of the other areas, those radiator intakes and things like that with a lap belt on that particular one. And then we've actually got that short engine coolers off the top and bottom. So we get two of those as well. So actually that's quite a nice little bit of detail down in there. We've got that, I don't know, I think it looks like a fuel tank, but clearly it's not. It sits in the cockpit and the centre console, which again, if you can see it, it's very, very nicely done. But again, it looks like it may have lost a few little parts this is all par for it. They tend to get knocked and things because they're running around in a bag, unfortunately. We've got another seat. Then we've got the engines. And again, it's got good veining detail, things like that. And we've got these ones as well, which is the actual shrouds around with the exhausts, which actually don't look too bad at all either. So when those are sort of would be fitting together in there. And again, you do have to be careful because you just see it just out of shot here. That's lying there. You might think it's a bit of flash. That's one of the yokes. So again, we've got these little parts down in here. So do be very mindful when you're taking these parts out. Even the smallest little part might be required. So like we've got this little guy just down in here. I have a feeling he is a part. So we're popping back in the bag. But unfortunately, all the fly kits tend to do this. We have bits literally flying off pun intended, the actual resin. And I'm going to put them back in it because I definitely don't want to lose any. And we're just having a whip round. That could be a part. I think the rest of it is genuinely flash. Okay, but again, nice touch with the fly kits that you do get these parts in there. The clear parts, which sometimes count not as clear as perhaps you would want. So you've got two types on here. So we've got the ones with all the windows, which actually are square. You might expect they're pretty much as you expect. Actually, this one doesn't look too bad, but sometimes you can probably see up here, it needs just a little bit of polishing, maybe dipping, something else like that. It looks like it's had a bit of a rub. So again, you might want to take care of that. 
So, but generally not too bad. And again, we've got one of these front ones, depending which version you're doing with a dome top, nav lights on the wings here, things like that. Again, they're all pretty good, but you might just want to dip them a bit. I think they could be a little bit clearer. You might notice it's got a little bit of distortion just running in here when you're having a good close up look at it. But again, spending a little bit of time, you know, just taking care of those before they actually go into the model should pay your dividends a little bit later. Right, fuselage. Now again, just to reiterate here, Fly are what I would call a limited run kit. So you don't expect great things on the negative, shall we say. So obviously this is our face size. On the inside of the mold, it gets very, very expensive doing two side injection molding. So they tend to do one uh, or it's very basic. And again, this is no uh, substitute, okay? What you do get though, although it doesn't look it, and it always feels quite rough, you do get all the recessed and raised details on the outside. So hopefully you can see it. Actually, that's not too bad at all, trying to catch in the light. You can see what I mean about the molds are quite rough. But again, once you polish them and give them a light sand, little bit of polish over, get your primer coat on there, they'll be absolutely fine. It was no different than I did the Wessex. You can see you get the odd little bit of flash running in the back, it's gonna need clearing out. So cleaning up your parts and making sure they're all good is an absolute must. But generally, as you can see, no problem at all. We were talking, oh, so I'll just show you this side. And then obviously we've got the gears and the flight deck area. You can see just like that. On the inside, this is what we're talking about. Very limited detail, if anything at all, down in here, okay? And again, you notice no locating tabs anywhere, which I have to say, I do cut them off for most kits anyway. When you've got big fuselage halves, it's easier because then you get a, a nicer fit sometimes. Because not always, not on every kit, clearly, but not always do they actually line up, all right? But again, that looks very nice. So wing detail, as you can see on this sprue here, big old wings on this. And again, although it's rough and you know, you almost need gloves, but as you can see, or hopefully you'll be able to see, it's got everything you could want. So you've got all the panel lines down in here. This is the lower wing. And by the time it's had a clean up and everything else, it will have all the details you want. And actually they're not far out. Again, some of the parts they do have, and that's a broken part just there. Okay, but again, they do have a little bit of flash, a little bit of nastiness all over them, so they do need a little bit of cleanup. But again, swiping around with a sanding stick should be no problem at all. So you've got your wheels, and your, I think that's the instrument panel. This is the actual instrument panel here. And some of the parts, and again, it's a little bit ropey, but once it's in, you'll be absolutely fine. Again, no locating tabs, big old areas down in here, but you shouldn't have a problem with that. Upper wing, exactly the same, all right? So again, it's one of those ones where you just see past all of this and it'll be fine, okay? You just get it together, sand and go. But again, it does have all the actual riveting onto the access panels, things like that. That's no problem at all. And again, you get the old blemish in the mold and the various things, but generally they are pretty good. Quality control is quite good on these kits. And again, got your wheels antennas and aerials and various things and then up here we got the props and the engine the cells and all of those details and as you might imagine on your blind side there's really nothing at all to talk about but again there's no sink marks in it there's none of that business it's absolutely fine okay last up we've actually got the tailplane area so we've got the two tails okay and the vertical and again no moving parts or anything else like that but if you wanted to you could scratch build those in Okay, and again, nice details right the way over, but once again, nothing really on the inside. And there you have it. Look past its basic shape. What you can do with these kits, and what's really, really nice is, you can just do it as a whole and have it like that, on a display, all buttoned up, and it will look beautiful, no problem at all. If you wanted to though, and that's the nice thing with fly kits, you could open up the front end perhaps, and put the detail in and show it all open. It wouldn't take much to do it either. They lend themselves really, really nice to actually going through scratch building on top. So when I did like the Wessex, all the internals, weren't there. So you're thinking, right, so I'm gonna to have to put the formers in. And actually it doesn't take too long at all. Then we put in some wiring looms, then we have the little lights in there. We put in some soundproof blanketing in there, all those various things which don't take too long at all. And we ended up with something very, very nice. And to be honest with you, the Fly Wessex 
not only is it a beautiful looking helicopter, I've got a real sense of pride in it because it's not just a shake and bake kit. It does need a little bit of filler. It does need a little bit of cleanup and all the rest of it. But once you've done it, you end up with something very, very nice indeed. And again, I don't think this kit would be anything different. So there we go. That's the Fly 172nd Bristol 170 Freighter Mark 21.